This is an AQA GCSE Physics Higher Tier Paper 1 from June 21. 1. Figure 1 shows an electric car being recharged. The charging station applies a direct potential difference across the battery of the car. What does direct potential difference mean? Remember, in terms of physics, direct means in one direction only, e.g. DC, AC, direct current. It's very similar. Direct potential difference means potential difference is in one direction only. Which equation links energy transferred, power and time? I like to use formula triangles to help me. We play tennis. Remember, work done and energy are the same. So, our equation is in terms of energy. We cover what we're after. So, it's power times time. The battery in the electric car can store a large amount of joules of energy. The charging station has a power output of this. Calculate the time taken to fully recharge the battery. So, cover what we're after. We're after time which is energy divided by power. Always write out your equation, substitute in your values. We don't need to change any of our units. Those are our standard SI units. Our value here is 22,500. Which equation links current potential difference and resistance? I use VETS in RAIN to help me here. Let's have a look if we have it in terms of I. So current is voltage divided by resistance. Neither of those are the same. What about if we have it in terms of R? It's voltage divided by current. What about in terms of V? V equals IR. So it's this one. The potential difference across the battery is 480 volts. There's a current of 15 amps, calculate the resistance. So we want this version of the equation. Substitute in our potential difference, our voltage. The answer is 32 ohms. Different charging systems use different electrical currents. Charging system A has a current of 13 amps. B has a current of 26 amps. Both voltages are 230 volts. How does the time taken to recharge a battery using charging system A compared with the time for using charging system B? Now look at these numbers. Because charging system B has a much greater current, it means it will charge much more quickly compared with A. And therefore, because the current is twice as large going into B, it means it will take twice as long to charge A. Energy from the sun is released by nuclear fusion. Complete the sentences. Nuclear fusion is the joining together of, remember it's nuclei. During nuclear fusion, the total mass of the particles decreases. Remember, mass is always lost in nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion of deuterium is difficult to achieve on Earth because of the high temperature needed. Electricity is used to increase the temperature of 4 grams of deuterium by 50 million Celsius. Here's the specific heat capacity. Calculate the energy needed to increase the temperature. Use the physics equation sheet. So the equation you'll pick out is E equals mc delta T. So we're after E. The mass is 4 grams. We need the standard SI unit because we've got kilograms there. So we need to divide 4 by 1,000. Our specific heat capacity is 5,200, given here. Our temperature change is 50 million. I'm going to rub this out because I'm running out of space. Big number. I don't think I can say this number. Seven zeros. The idea of obtaining power from nuclear fusion was investigated using models. The models were tested before starting to build the first commercial nuclear fusion power station. Suggest two reasons why models were tested. 
Okay, first of all, it's going to be so much cheaper, isn't it, to make these small-scale models as opposed to the real thing, especially if you realise that there's, it's not going to work. Using models allows you to assess safety risk. You can look at environmental impact. You can even check that f the fusion process is going to be possible. Generating electricity using nuclear fusion will have fewer environmental effects than generating electricity using fossil fuels. Explain one environmental effect of generating electricity using fossil fuels. So, burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide. Why is this an issue? Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which causes global warming. When you explain something, you have to give the science behind it. Student A investigated how the current in resistor R at constant temperature varied with the potential difference across the resistor. Student A recorded both the positive and negative values of the current. Figure 2 shows the circuit that student A used. Describe a method that student A could use for this investigation. Let's label everything first of all. Here's your battery. Here's your variable resistor. We've got a switch. An ammeter which measures current. Here's your resistor, and here's your voltmeter, which measures potential difference or voltage. So we're measuring the current using the ammeter, and we're going to measure the potential difference using the voltmeter. Let's start by saying that. Remember, in order to alter these values, we need to alter the resistance of the circuit, which is the purpose of the variable resistor. And then just a few extra details. Switch off the circuit between readings. Repeat the measurements of current and potential difference with negative values of current. And then lastly, it's always good to plot a graph of current against potential difference. Student B repeated the investigation. During student B's investigation, the temperature of resistant R increased. Explain how the increased temperature of resistor R would have affected student B's results. When you increase the temperature, you increase the resistance because those positive metal ions vibrate more. So we're going to start by saying that, and then that means that the current and the potential difference would no longer be directly proportional. So when you drew that current potential difference graph, it would no longer be straight. Figure 3 shows the scale on a moving coil ammeter at one time in the investigation. What is the resolution of the moving coil ammeter? Let's have a look at all these increments. Hopefully you can see that that would be 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. So the resolution is the difference in these numbers, which is 0 0.2 amps. Student B replaced the moving coil ammeter with a digital ammeter. Figure 4 shows the reading. The digital ammeter has a higher resolution than the moving coil ammeter. Give one other reason why it would have been better to use the digital ammeter throughout this investigation. Mainly because it's a lot easier to read, isn't it? So there's much less chance of misreading the value. It can also give a reading closer to the true value. And if you're feeling fancy, you can talk about there being no parallax error, which is all to do with lining up your eye with the meter. The student investigated the density of different fruits. Table 1 shows the results. The student determined the volume of each fruit using a displacement can and measuring cylinder. What other piece of equipment would the student need to determine the density? So remember, density equals mass, which is grams, divided by volume. Look, you can even work it out from the table. So you would need a balance. Write down the equation which links density, mass and volume. You can write it out in full or with the symbols. But luckily I just did that. The mass of the apple was 85 grams. The density was this. Calculate the volume and give your answer in centimetres cubed. That's helpful. All our units are appropriate. So volume equals mass divided by density. 
So you do 85 divided by 0 0.68, which is 125. The student only measured the volume of each fruit once. The volume measurements cannot be used to show that the method to measure the volume gives precise readings. Give the reason why. We can't say that we have precise readings because we haven't made repeat readings for each volume. And we need to prove that these readings would be close together. During one year, 1.25 times 10 to the 18 joules of energy was transferred. The number of seconds in a year. Thank you for telling us that. Calculate the mean energy transferred each second. Give your answer to three significant figures. So we need to take that energy value and we need to divide it by the number of seconds in a year. Figure 5 shows a house with a solar power system. The solar cells generate electricity. When the electricity generated by the cells is not needed, the energy is stored in a battery. The charge flow through the cable between the solar panels and the battery in 24 hours was 27,000 coulombs. Calculate the current. So we have time, we have charge, we have current. QIT, so we need I, which is Q divided by T. Q was 27,000 coulombs. T is 24 hours, but be careful that needs converting into seconds by timesing by 60 twice. Always be careful with your units. Show all your working and you'll get a final value of 0 0.313 to three significant figures. At one time, the total power input was 7.8 kilowatts. The efficiency was 0 0.5. Calculate the useful power output. Be careful with this unit. Let's get it into watts by times in by a thousand. So our equation here is useful energy out over total energy in equals efficiency. So substitute in our values. We have after the useful energy out, we know that our Total power input was 7,800 watts. To find x, remember you need to multiply 0 0.15 by 7,800 to get 1,170. And remember that number because it's the output should be less than the input, so that makes sense. It is unlikely that all the electricity that the UK needs can be generated by solar power systems. Explain why. So use the information above. Look, the efficiency of these solar cells is dreadful. It's only 0 0.15. So in terms of how many solar panels you would need to meet the requirements of the UK, you need a huge amount of land. And quite frankly, it's not possible. Figure six shows the mass number and the atomic number for the nuclei of five different atoms. How many neutrons are there in a nucleus of atom A? So atom A has 234 as its mass number and 86 as its atomic number. So I'm setting up like a usual symbol in the periodic table. So let's work out the difference in those two numbers. The answer is 148. Which two atoms in figure six are the same element? Remember, they have to have the same atomic number to be the same element so here 92 it's d and e nucleus b decays by emitting an alpha particle draw an arrow on figure seven to represent the alpha decay so an alpha particle is lost means that two protons and two neutrons have been lost so expect the mass number to decrease by four and the atomic number to decrease by 2. What is meant by the random nature of radioactive decay? It means you can't predict when a nucleus will decay. A polonium nucleus decays by emitting an alpha particle and forming lead, 
The lead nucleus decays by emitting a beta particle to form bismuth. The bismuth decays by emitting a beta particle and forms polonium. Explain how these three decays result in the nucleus of the original element polonium. So we just need to say what's happening here. So this decay down here would mean that two protons and two neutrons are lost. Whereas with a beta particle, remember that a neutron turns into a proton, meaning that at this point, the mass number stays the same, whereas the atomic number increases by one. And then the same is true here. So if you actually look at what's going on, these steps cancel out the original step up here. So one alpha decay decreases the proton number by two, but two beta decays increases the proton number by two, meaning that the atomic number stays the same as the original element. I soon investigated how the current in a series circuit varied with the resistance of a variable resistor. Here's the circuit used. Here are some results of current versus resistance. The battery had a power output of 230 MW when the resistance of the variable resistor was 36 ohms. Calculate the potential difference. So we have a power value, a resistance value, and we're after V. So let's use two formula triangles here to help us. PIV and Vets in Rain again, because what's common in both is this current value. So we're going to need to find the current. And the way we can do that is by using the graph. So let's look up 36 here. So we can see our current value is 0 0.08. And actually now we're ready to go. So we are after potential difference V, which is P over I. Our power is 230 milliwatts. Let's divide that by 1,000 to get it into watts. And then divide it by that current value we just found to get 2.875. The student concluded the current in the circuit was inversely proportional to the resistance of the variable resistor. Explain how figure 9 shows that the student is correct. So if we were to multiply our current by resistance for two separate points here, so let's try this one. Let's do 12 times by 0 0.24 and then compare it to this point here, which is 24 times 0 0.12. Look, these values are the same. And so what we write here is that the product or multiplying the current by the resistance produces a constant. Figure 10 shows a circuit with a switch connected incorrectly. Here's our switch. Explain how closing the switch would affect the current in the variable resistor. By closing the switch, it means the current would flow this way because it would be the path of least resistance, meaning that the current here would dip to virtually zero. Figure 11 shows a toy car in different positions on a racing track. The toy car and the racing track can be modelled as a closed system. Why can the toy car and racing track be considered a closed system? Well, that's because the total energy of the racing track and the car is constant. The car is released from rest at position A and accelerates due to gravity down to position B. The mass of the car is this. The vertical height between position A and B is this going to put that straight into meters. The gravitational field strength is this. Calculate the maximum possible speed of the toy car when it reaches position B. So we're going from A to B. Let's label what we've got. We've got mass, we've got height, we've got gravity. We're being asked to find speed. So this is a SUVAT equation. 
they're quite hard to identify. But let's have a look what we're after. We're after the final speed, our initial speed, because it started at rest is zero. Acceleration due to gravity. Oh, you have to learn that value. It's 10. And distance is 0 0.9. Square root that value to get an answer of 4.2. Fig 11 is repeated below at position C here. The car's gravitational potential energy is 0 0.2 joules greater than it was at B. How much kinetic energy does the car need at position B to complete the loop? Give a reason for your answer. So we're comparing position B here. And look, it's going to have to go all the way up there. So actually, it's going to need more than 0 0.27 joules. And why is that? Because the car needs to be moving to complete the loop. A teacher demonstrated the relationship between the pressure in a gas and the volume of the gas. Figure 12 shows the apparatus used. This is the method used. Record the initial volume of gas in the syringe and the pressure reading before any weights are attached. Add a 2 Newton weight. Record the volume of the gas and the reading in the pressure gauge. Repeat steps 2 and 3 until a weight of 12 Newtons is attached. What was the range of force used? Well, that's the difference between the highest and the lowest value. Notice here that they took a reading before any weights were attached. So that was zero newtons and they went all the way to 12. Give one control variable in the investigation. Definitely temperature because that's really going to affect the volume of a gas. When the volume of the gas in the syringe was 45 centimetres cubed, the pressure gauge showed a reading of 60 kPa. Calculate the pressure in the gas when the volume of gas in the syringe was 40. So you need this equation, P1V1 equals P2V2. We know that the first volume was 45, the first pressure was 60, we're being asked for P2, and we have a second volume of 40, so substitute in your values. We don't need to touch the units because look at the pressure unit down here. 60 times 45 is 2,700. Divide both sides by 40 to find P2. When the volume of gas in the syringe increased, the pressure decreased to explain why. Think about it. It's an answer worth rote learning, to be honest. By increasing the volume, it means that there are less frequent collisions between the particles of gas and the walls of the syringe. And what that means is that there is less force created on the walls of the syringe. And then according to the equation, Pressure equals force over area. If you decrease that force, pressure will decrease. Always state an equation where possible. Figure 13 shows some overhead power cables on the national grid. Explain the advantage of transmitting electricity at a very high potential difference. Okay, why do we get the voltage or potential difference high? To decrease the current. Because remember, high currents have a heating effect, meaning the energy is dissipated. So fundamentally, there's an increased efficiency of power transmission. It is dangerous for a person to fly kite near an overhead power cable. Figure 14 shows a person flying a kite. The person could receive a fatal shock if the kite was very close to but not touching the power cable. Why? Because the electric field strength is very high in the cables, it means that the air can become a conductor of that charge and therefore that string conducts the charge to the person. A 
scientist investigated how the potential difference needed for the air to conduct charge varies with the distance between the cable and the earth. The data in figure 15 gives the relationship between potential difference and distance when the air is dry. When the humidity of the air increases, the air becomes a better conductor. Draw a line on figure 15 to show how the potential difference changes with distance if the humidity of the air increases. So we know it's a better conductor. So we'll start at zero, so it's a directly proportional relationship still. We'd expect the potential difference to decrease for the same values of distance. Figure 16 shows a cross-section through a power cable. A one metre length of a single aluminium wire is a better conductor than one of steel. The individual wires behave as, as if they are resistors connected in parallel. Explain why the current of the steel wire is different to the current in a single aluminium wire. The key thing here is the statement that the individual wires behave as if their resistors connected in parallel. What does that mean? It means that the potential difference is the same in these wires. But according to this formula triangle, for the potential difference to be the same and the current to be different, it means that the resistance must also be different between the steel and the aluminium, and in fact it's higher in the steel. A student investigated how the temperature of a lump of ice varied as the ice was heated. The student recorded the temperature until the ice melted and then the water produced was boiled. Figure 17 shows the student's results. The power output of the heater was constant. The specific heat capacity of ice is less than the specific heat capacity of water. We explain how figure 17 shows this. This, remember, is the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. If you have a look here, remember this is where the water will be ice. This is where the water will be liquid. Notice that this gradient is steeper, which means that it will take less energy to increase the temperature by a fixed amount. The specific latent heat of fusion of ice is less than the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. We explain how figure 17 shows this. Now the specific latent heat of fusion is all to do with the amount of energy needed to convert a solid to a liquid, whereas the specific latent heat of vaporization is liquid to gas. So solid to liquid is here, liquid to gas is here. What is true for these things, notice it takes so much longer to convert from a liquid to a gas. So vaporization of water took much longer than fusion of ice. And what does that indicate? Well, it means that there is less energy needed to change the state from solid to liquid. The second student did the same investigation and recorded the temperature until the water produced boiled. In the second student's investigation, more thermal energy was transferred to the surroundings. Describe two ways the results of the experiment in figure 17 would have been different. Well, if more energy is being wasted into the surroundings, well, clearly it will take longer for the ice or the water to increase in temperature, longer for them to change state, and you might even notice that the change in temperature might not be linear. When the water was boiling, 0.03 kilograms of water turned into steam. The energy transferred was 69 kJ. Calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. Give your unit. So the energy requirement was 69,000. The mass was 0.03. And we're after L. So divide both sides by 0.03. And then what about units? Well, let's rearrange the subject of that equation, substitute in the units for energy, which is joules. Mass was kg, so our answer is 0.03.